Hello, welcome back to the garden. Today is Monday the 17th of July. We're up here in the greenhouse and we're gonna be harvesting some pot grown carrot. The first one is Royal Chantenay. The next one is Early Nantes and then we've got Amsterdam Forcing. All of which were sown around the 3rd of March this year. They've stayed here in the greenhouse ever since being watered. Two varieties are in root trainers and the other variety, which is Royal Chantenay, is in this lovely five litre pot. The main reason that I decided to grow carrots in containers this year was just so I can control the environment that they were growing in. When I've grown them down at the allotment in the open ground, I've germinated them really nicely. They've been growing very well. And then we have a couple of days of rain and all of a sudden you pop down the allotment again and a six metre row of beautiful carrots have completely disappeared which is really disheartening but it means you don't get a harvest at all and then when I've grown them in big tubs on the patio before I had really bad infestation with carrot fly which meant that about half of the harvest had to be thrown away so this year I thought I'm going to try growing them inside the greenhouse and then it means that you can actually sow them a little bit earlier. It's warmer in here, but then I've, I've got less slugs and snails in here. So it meant that they could germinate nicely and grow on so that if they did get any pests and diseases a little bit later, they were stronger to be able to fight those attacks off. So um, the first one here is in this five litre bucket and they were probably in a position to be harvested maybe about a month ago, but I've not had the chance to harvest them with you and I did want to get that done with you. The whole plan with these was to get them sown in here, germinated, and then I was going to take them inside and put them on a really sunny windowsill to see how they grew inside. But um, my windowsills got really kind of packed at home. So I bought them back out, I think, to film and then I never took them back inside. So we can't do that experiment of seeing how they grew on a windowsill, but they are quite big in there. So I definitely know we've got a harvest of those. Um, the other two varieties are in the root trainers and this is a close up of those root trainers that I've grown them in. A friend of mine, Carl, um, from um, Plot to Plate No Dig, grew them in these a couple of years ago and I thought it was an amazing idea and then when I went to visit his allotment he gave me some so I was really excited about that so I know we've got carrots in them but it'd be really interesting to see how they've actually done and how big they are and just like the Royal Chantenays the ones behind me in this root trainer should have been harvested a little while ago but again I wanted to do it with you. Before we get to the exciting bit and start harvesting these carrots, I just want to say that I am really impressed with how well they've done. I've had so much growth on the top and I'm really hoping that is reflected under the ground because this greenhouse is very shady. At the moment, the sun is out and I've got trees along this side and I have a tree um, just over there that does actually block quite a lot of light out in here. I was planning on growing tomatoes in here this year, but didn't get around to it and because these have done so well I think that this greenhouse might be dedicated to growing carrots because carrots are actually you know they're very cheap to buy in the shop but they do actually grow really nicely as long as you can get them past the initial stages of um you know germination and turning them into seedlings and stuff because they grow really well and you can actually get harvest almost every single week of the year if you're really organized and unlike me who started with this amount of carrots and I had planned on growing you know more or sowing more every two weeks which didn't happen but if these have done well. We're going to be sowing some more in here today. Well, we'll probably be sowing some more in here today anyway. Um, and then, yeah, go from there. So, right, let's get to the exciting bit. The first ones that we're going to be harvesting today are the Royal Chantenay. I went with that variety in the small pot because they're a dumpy carrot and they don't need as much room as others. So they are perfect for containers. And when I sowed these, I put 10 seeds in and only six initially germinated. So it was very interesting because about three weeks after I'd had that germination, I did sow more seeds, um, which as you can see are here, but they are really, really tiny. So it's very interesting how these ones grew much bigger and then um, the other ones just never caught on. So whether it was just light that was shading them out because these were much bigger or it was space under the ground, I'm not sure. So let's go for the first one. Oh, that is the first one. It's forked, but quite a nice sized carrot. A 
another one. Number three. That's not actually bad, is it? For a pot. And that is a really lovely carrot. Look at it. number four number five and there's number six really impressed with that and then let's have a quick look at the tiddly ones there you go <laughs> I'm not going to bother taking those into the house they can just go straight on the compost heap look and there's the other one so all together we have six Royal Chantonet and actually I think these are about kind of the right size for them anyway. I am really impressed with that. Definitely would make a meal and if you had enough room for maybe 10 of these pots you could easily have a harvest twice a week of carrots like this and re-sow them and then re-harvest in another 10 to 11 weeks so I'm really really impressed with those. Um, let's move on to the next ones though. In this root trainer we've got um, four rows of carrots, two at the back are Amsterdam forcing and the two at the front are the early nonce. They've had the same amount of water so it'll be really interesting to see how the two varieties compare with each other. Um, but before we start actually pulling them out I've wanted to have a quick look underneath because these root trainers have holes in the bottom which has been in contact with the ground the whole time. So I'm wondering if there are loads of roots out at the bottom or if there's any carrots out at the bottom. I'm not sure. Let's have a look quickly. It's definitely attached. So let's have a quick look underneath. So there's definitely loads of roots there. If I just turn it round. There are definitely loads of roots out the bottom, but I can't see any carrots. But interestingly, having those roots out the bottom means that they've been able to kind of go underground and find more water and nutrients. So if I move it like this, it's probably slightly better for you to see as we harvest them. So let's go with the ones at the back, which are the um, Amsterdam forcing. A little disclaimer before we actually start harvesting them, I definitely think they probably could have had more water, uh, especially over the really dry period. They were getting watered maybe every two or three days, but I probably should have been watering them every day. So if they are a little bit smaller, um, that is potentially why, rather than being them, rather than them being in the root trainer. Um, so let's let's start. Okay, that is the first two. I am really impressed with that. How exciting is that? Right. I had really good germination, but not every single one did germinate. <laughs> okay, that's a bit stubby. If they're, <laughs> if they're mostly like that, I am going to be a little bit disappointed. There you go, that's the next one. So at the moment, the Chantonais, the Royal Chantonais are doing better. Next one, that's a bit of a nicer size, isn't it? Oh, we've got three in this one. Three in that one, look at that. And they came out really nicely. Oh my goodness. It doesn't have to be big, does it? If you could get those, harvest seeds every couple of days in your garden that would be perfect I bet they're so sweet as well I'm gonna have to do a taste test aren't I oh look this one's got two in as well it's just come out just like that look at that I did put two in each and I think I did say that I was going to be um pulling out one of each but oh my goodness I'm so impressed okay that's probably the longest and most fully formed looking you know what, this is actually pretty amazing. Look at that one. Look at that. And look how clean they're coming out. Oh my goodness. I'm onto something here. Well, actually Carl is because he he kind of 
was the one that showed me his. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. They are brilliant. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. We also have a couple of stinging nettles that have germinated. <laughs> Look, this one has come out completely in the root trainer. So let's put, try and put that back. Ah. Ow, ow, ow. Hang on a minute. There is a stinging nettle with it. And that really hurt. Right. Ugh, go away. Okay. So look, this one has shared its root trainer with a stinging nettle and it's still done pretty well. Ow, there's another one. Ow. Oh, this one. Okay, so this is the potential size they could have all been. Wow. So, so far, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that, but they could have been that good. So I'm going to have to look after them better next time I grow them in here. There's the next one. And there you go. So I am pretty pleased with that. Look at that. How exciting. Because to be honest, the first couple were these ones, weren't they? And look, we've got some corkers in there. That's probably the biggest one. No, hang on, that is the biggest one. Look at that. Right, let's put these to the side. So these are the amps. I'm gonna put the label with it before I forget. So I'll put those over here. Okay, and then the next ones are the early nonce, right. So I think I had a little bit less germination with these ones. First one out, a little bit small, isn't it? Oh, look, there was two in that one. They are so long, aren't they? And do you know what? I really did think that I needed to thin them out, but you know, having two like that, how lovely. And compared to the supermarket, they are smaller, but when you grow them yourself, you, they don't need to be the size of the supermarket ones, do they? If you've got enough space to grow buckets of them, then it doesn't matter how small they are. That's the next one. Not very good. And by the looks of it, we did have less germination in um, these ones. Oh, there, there is two in this one. Oh. <laughs> They've grown big, those ones. Not very good. Again, not great, is it? And then the last... There you go. So a much smaller harvest, but how amazing is this? Let's, let's put them all together and compare them. When we compare the three varieties of carrots that we've harvested today, the Royal Chantenay, the Amsterdam Forcing and the Early Nantes, it's pretty clear for me to see that the biggest harvest was the Early Nantes here and definitely the biggest carrot. Look at the size of that. It does make me wish I'd looked after them a bit more, given them more water when I had the chance, but I can make sure I do that on the next round. Um, but one thing that we need to bear in mind, that all three varieties have different characteristics. So the Royal Chantenays will never be as big as the Amsterdam Forcing because they're a stubby, stubbier carrot. But I am so impressed with this and I can't wait to sow some more seeds. Before I sow any more carrot seeds in this root trainer, I'm just going to fill it up with some compost. Originally, I used a mix of 50% homemade compost and 50% bought in peat free compost, but it is the end of the season now, so I don't have really very much homemade compost left. A few people at the time mentioned that it's not necessarily a good idea to use homemade compost when it comes to growing carrots, just because the amount of weeds that germinate in it. And also it's quite rich, but 
I found that not too many weeds germinated in it. And as you could see, there was a few stinging nettles there, um, but it didn't really seem to affect the harvest. So I would definitely recommend if you can using um, homemade compost in future. This root trainer was growing in the corner of the greenhouse in a raised bed in the center. If I move it over to the side though, I do have room for two. So I think rather than having two varieties grown in this one, we're just gonna put the one variety in it and then we'll do the other. So this root trainer now has been topped up and ready to receive the seeds, which are the Amsterdam forcing. Just opened this now and there are so many seeds in here. So I think I'm gonna go with three in each. Hopefully that means I will get germination in each and then Depending on how many germinate, I might take one out or just see how they do. Very interestingly, with the Amsterdam, it's telling me that they can be sown up to July. So um, hopefully they germinate really quickly because now we've had our longest day of the year. So it is going to, well, there will be less light now going forward. So we do want to get things germinated as quickly as possible to give them the best chance of giving you a nice big harvest. I think every day matters now at this time of the year. Some of these have had a few more than three in. Oh, that one's had five, whoops. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to get rid of some as they germinate otherwise there'd be just too many in each and just give them a quick cover over I'm pretty happy with that now so I think I'll just uh, move on to the next variety and then I will give them all a water at the end very interestingly, I mentioned this was a five litre pot earlier, but look, it's not even full. So there's probably about three litres of compost in there. So I'm so impressed with those Royal Chantonnays. Just having a look, quick look in my siege packs now. And actually I don't have a pack of Royal Chantonnay. So I think I'm just gonna go with some early nonce in this one, but I am gonna give it a really good topping up. Just as I did with the originals i'm going to put 10 seeds in here but i'm going to do 10 spots with two seeds in i think and again i'm probably going to end up putting more together i've just filled this root trainer up but you can probably notice that they're not quite as full as the other one but i'm running out of compost so i want to make sure i have enough to cover them over so it's a little bit less but Remember, they can kind of put their roots down into the compost below and get more nutrients if they need it. And this is the early nonce too. Or early nonce five, I think, and I put way more <laughs> than... I don't know why I say I'm just going to put three in each or two in each because I always end up putting more in. And then if they actually do grow, I then don't want to pull them out because I feel guilty, so... Whoops. We're going to have a bunch of carrots growing in each of these root trainers. That'd be interesting to see how big they grow. Whoops. Honestly, there's about five in each of here. Whoops. Right. I definitely am going to have to get rid of some, aren't I? So we've got the early Nance 2 there and the Amsterdam forcing here. And as you can see, the sun's come out and we do have sun on both of these trays now so hopefully they germinate really quickly and then we've got the other early nonce as well which are in here and i'll probably just leave this pot here now until they germinate and then i can move it over but behind me here we have another pot this is probably a 30 litre pot I bought it into the greenhouse last year, only just filled it up with used compost from potato buckets. And I'd originally thought that would be really good for growing a melanin or something like that. But since it's next to these ones and I've got quite a few carrot seeds, I think I'm gonna put some in here too. I'm just gonna give it a really quick water first before I actually put any seeds in it because this is really, really dry compost. I've had a quick look in the seed box today and I've gone with a carrot variety called Volcano F1. It's not a variety that I've ever heard of before. It came through in a magazine and there's 75 seeds in here. So I think I might 
kind of try and space them around in again little modules of a couple of seeds each probably more but um we go from there let me know if you've grown this variety before because i know nothing about it it's an f1 variety though so i'm assuming um they'll all kind of be ready about the same time and they should all be quite uniform and we should have germination with about within about kind of 10 to 14 days and i'm guessing we'll be able to start harvesting these in about maybe 14 weeks i still got quite a few seeds left actually but i think i'm going to leave it see how these ones germinate and if there's any gaps in germination i can use the rest of the seeds to pad it out i'd be really interested to know the varieties of carrots that you've grown this year if you've got a favorite one do let me know because i'm always interested in getting hints and tips or varieties that are worth going for. And if I haven't said already, I think I'll be just coming out every day and giving them a water. At this time of germination, it's really important that you don't let the top layer of the soil dry out because that can prohibit the seeds from growing or from germinating. I've also got one module tray left over and i've got another um root trailer down there that's got some other stuff growing in so i'm definitely going to be sowing these over the next week or so and also the whole long bed next to me i think i'm also going to give that a go in terms of growing carrots in the actual soil so that'd be really interesting if i can get that done because when we we compare the harvest so we can see how well they do it'd be very very interesting thank you so much ah there's a bee, there's a bee. Ah! I'm really sorry about that. I'm okay with bees, but honeybees just seem to go for you. And we were in a confined space, so I got straight out of its way. And luckily, it's flown off now. I really hope that you've enjoyed watching today's video. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I really hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've also inspired you to give container growing carrots a go if you've not tried it before, because... I am so pleased with that harvest. As I mentioned before as well, if you've got any varieties of carrots that you can suggest growing, please let me know in the comments down below. Or if you've got any carrot growing tips, I'd also be really interested. And as well as me reading all of the comments, I know lots of other people will come to the comment section as well to get more tips. So please leave those down below. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, please do hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of all of my latest videos. As ever, YouTube have some videos up now on the screen that they think you'll like. Also, including that video of me sewing those carrots in the first place. So if you didn't watch that, please go ahead and watch that and I'll catch up with you in the next episode. Bye!